I want to put this poster up. I think it's, it's important. Uh, and before we get to, to the border, I just want you to remind us, um, who was president in, in 2020 again? Donald Trump. Thank you. Now, is it true that under Donald Trump, murder rates surged by 30% according to data collected by police departments across America to the highest rate since the 90s? Yes, absolutely. Surge in the summer of 2020. And this data was collected by our men and women in, in police, like the Long Beach Police Department, which I um, honorably uh, represented and, and, and helped um, support back in, in my community. Now, since 2020, when we know that President Biden was elected, have violent crime rates increased or fallen? They've fallen year after year, yes. In fact, they have fallen dramatically. Is that correct? And, and we just have reporting early this it, fiscal year, or this 24, 2024, that it, they're continuing to fall. So crime is at, a, at, at incredibly high levels when Donald Trump is elected, and now overall violent crime has dramatically decreased now that President Biden is in office. Is that correct? Over the last four years, crime has Thank you. And that's actually data reported by our cops. So we want to believe our men and women and law enforcement, that's the data that they're providing us. Um, before I can, I've only been in Congress for a year. I served as mayor for eight years before that. That is just not the way that you actually take data on crime. So I think we also need to be real realistic and honest about the way crime is measured in the United States. And it's measured when a crime is committed, you, that's when you take the data. So this idea of folks running away or not being captured or we're not capturing this crime or that crime is just factually incorrect. I also just wanna know that prior to my service as mayor, I was an educator for 10 years in the classroom at the college level, and we use data to make decisions. This idea that we're not going to use data to actually make decisions, I think, is, um, is interesting, and, and I certainly don't agree with it. I want to ask some questions about data and about facts, not about what we think is happening or may not be happening. I also want to talk about some, some uh, violent crime trackers that we've discussed. Murder, we know, has plummeted in the U.S. since 2023, one of the fastest rates of decline we've ever actually had. Now, Mr. Beer, there are 45 million immigrants in this country. Now, why do you think Donald Trump is pushing this migrant crime narrative, which we know is not true? Well, it's because he wants to push policies that ban immigrants. We saw what he did when he was in office. He didn't reduce illegal immigration. He banned legal immigration to the United States. Now, is it fair to say that Trump's rhetoric accusing people, by the way, like me and my family, of poisoning the blood of this country or claiming that we're fueling an invasion actually fuels a potential for violence? Absolutely. I mean, if you look at the number of uh, criminals who have uh, uh, engaged in mass shootings. I mean, you're looking at the Pittsburgh shooter, you're like El Paso, Buffalo, uh, Charlottesville. Um, you go down the list and there are so many times where you hear this great replacement rhetoric being used to justify. Of course, there's crazy people on all sides of every debate, but we shouldn't be fueling it with irresponsible and inaccurate rhetoric. And we've already said and noted that the data provided to us by the men and women of our police departments across the country is also clear that non-citizens, undocumented migrants actually commit less crimes, actually a lot less crimes than naturalized citizens. Is that correct? That's right. 75% less for legal immigrants, 50% less for illegal immigrants. So a very significant difference. And it's also true that if you look at most of our major American cities, where you, and when you actually look at the undocumented population versus citizens, that those cities, that again, crime is being committed at a much higher rate by citizens than non-citizens. Is that correct? That's right. We've looked at the border sector in uh, cities in particular with a, a great deal of focus on them because they have so, so much cross-border traffic. They're among the safest in the United States, and they saw some of the fastest declines in crime in the 1990s and 2000s when their immigrant populations exploded. And so I think it's really important to paint a real picture of immigration, of migrants, of immigrants that are coming to this country to search for a better life and move away from the xenophobic rhetoric that, it, that tears down migrants, that tries to somehow paint them as murderers and rapists when the data does not actually support those arguments. And so this idea that we're not gonna look at data, I think is just, um, uh, it's, it's not, it, it, it's a joke, it's, un, it's unfair, and it's certainly causing more damage across the country than anything positive. I wanna just return to, to some of our, our policies as well. Now, Mr. Mr. Beer, one of the majority's witnesses today was, we know, one of the architects of Trump's immigration agenda, which included unprecedented restrictions on legal immigration. To, to close from my questioning, um, how did that actually impact the actual border, those Trump policies? Well, when we restrict legal immigration and asylum, we incentivize people to cross the border illegally. If we tell them there's no opportunity to come to this country legally, 
then of course you're going to see people, more people go to the border and try to seek safety and opportunity that way. It's counterproductive. It's a failed policy. It resulted in more evasions like I talked about. That's a problem for security. We want Border Patrol to focus on serious threats, not people coming for safety and opportunity in this country. Thank you, Serena. Yield back.